end this video covering tuberculosis of the kidneys and the urinary tract. Tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is a gram indeterminate bacteria, which tends to cause pulmonary TB, but it can also cause extra pulmonary TB. Tuberculosis of the kidneys would be an extra pulmonary TB form. So tuberculosis can disseminate and it spreads through the blood and these bacilli, the, the organism which causes TB is called mycobacterium tuberculosis. It's a bacillus and these bacilli spread either within the macrophages or they form granulomas. Either way, they can spread from the lungs to other extra pulmonary sites in the human body. So what kind of disease is TB? TB is actually a typically a pulmonary disease, but it can be extra pulmonary. It's a caseous necrotic disease. So what does it mean caseous necrosis? Necrosis means cell death and caseous means cheese-like. So it's a necrotic disease, cell death by cheese is a funny way to remember it. But essentially you are getting cell death, cells inside your body are uh, being destroyed by this cheese-like caseous necrosis. And whenever there is some sort of caseous necrosis, we can also expect some sort of calcium to deposit and the secondary complication of that being calcification. What is a primary infection of TB? The primary infection remains to be granulomas of the lungs. So these are granulomas of the lungs. What's a granuloma? It's an organized collection of macrophages, which are then surrounded by lymphocytes or giant cells. So it's basically granuloma is a collection of cells inside the lungs surrounded by our immune cells. What are the modes of spread of pulmonary TB to renal TB? Now, the important thing to remember is that renal TB does not develop immediately. So there's an incubation period of four to five years or even decades. So renal TB rarely develops in children because when they first get the TB, there is a bit of a delay in incubation period. So there are two options. You get this pulmonary TB and then straight away it... Um, goes to the kidneys. That's very unlikely. What's more likely is that, remember we called these cheese-like necrotic tissue collections? That cheese-like death, cell death, that cheese-like cell death is known as a caseous lesion now. Now it's formed a scar and it's wounded the lungs. This is known as a caseous lesion. So after that, um, what's going to happen to the caseous lesion? A couple of years later, the caseous lesion is going to reactivate. As it reactivates, it's going to spread to the kidneys. Okay? Once it spreads to the kidneys, from the kidney, it can go to the ureter. And from the ureter, it can go to the bladder. And then through the seminal vesicles, it can go to the epididymis. Now, the important thing to remember is you'll get hematogenous spread of the bacilli. However, because of there's a high renal blood flow, it is likely to spread to the kidneys fast once it reactivates after a couple of years. But remember, any portion of the lower genitourinary tract might be infected by this anterograde renal blood flow, urine flow. Obviously, the urine is going to start to flow downstream, and this urine flow will cause a downstream infection. Is renal TB immediate or delayed? We already addressed this. The lesions are essentially arrest. Here's um, the kidney itself. So even once the bacilli reach the kidney and cause this caseous necrosis, after that, the lesions may arrest and then reactivate after a few years. Now here, let's cover the healing for the kidneys as well as the investigations. How will we diagnose this? So the kidneys heal in different ways, but once you've got this insult, so always remember that anything outside the body is always going to have an insulting factor and a protective factor. The insulting factor was the bacterium agent, the bacillus, spreading throughout the blood. The protective factors are then going to be our own body's healing and scarring process. As it scars and gets fibrosed, 
or contract. So the kidney can respond in three different ways. It can start to contract, shrink, it can get to get scarred over these lesions, or it can become fibrotic. So these calcifications, this scarring and fibrosis combined might cause calcifications to form stones. And remember that it can all, these are the specific responses. However, this unspecific effect of the, of the um, bacteria can be interstitial nephritis. So what are the investigations? So we can either investigate the cause or we can investigate the effect, okay? So this is, applies for all medical diseases. If we investigate the cause, we're investigating the urine culture specifically or urinalysis. On urinalysis, you might get bacilli. Sorry, on urine culture, you might get this acid-fast bacilli. So you're going to use a specific acid-fast stain, which is the zeal nielsen stain. And you always take three samples in TB in the morning. However, if we would rather investigate the effect, investigate the effect on the kidneys, we can do an x-ray of the urinary system, which is known as intravenous urography. We can do an x-ray of the urinary system, which is known as intravenous urography. Or we can pass a cystoscope into the lower urogenitory gen tract, and from there, as we pass the cystoscope into the urethra, sorry, into the, basically into the lower genitalia tract through the urethra, we can get an image of the whole tract, and that's known as cystoscopy. Stay tuned for part two, where I cover the mnemonic for types of renal TB. Thank you for watching.